world is ours to explore, from hidden archaeological structures to impressive astronomical feats. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be looking at three recent scientific discoveries. The genome of a human from an unknown population has been recovered from cave dirt. For decades, tracing populations, both human and animal, has relied on dating remains from bones, with other informants like tools helping to give us clues, set some expectations and act as evidence supporting the genetic information we receive. Recently, however, we have taken a step forward, identifying the presence of a woman who lived 25,000 years ago without any bones in sight. An analysis of mud from beneath the floor of a cave has revealed traces of a woman who was alive in the last ice age. Alongside this woman, we also detected wolf and bison DNA within the same sample of dirt. We do not have masses of information surrounding this group, though the woman, wolf and bison represent a huge turning point in the field of archaeology the ability to identify ancient populations without any bones having been preserved. Not only did we rely on bones to conduct research like this before, but we also needed a great deal of luck to find them. Bones need to survive potential harsh conditions as well as the general decaying over time. A human skeleton can be nothing but mummified skin and tendons within just 50 years, and by 80 the soft collagen in bones decomposes, leaving bones to crack. This rapid decomposition rate can make the discovery of ancient bones from several thousands of years ago much more difficult. Furthermore, environmental conditions can either accelerate or delay this process. Not only do the bones have to survive, but they also need to be in a strong enough condition to preserve the DNA, as this is what gives us the information that can lead to breakthroughs and discoveries. Bones are not the only indicators of human activity in an area, however. Stone tools, for example, stand the test of time far more so than human remains. We have known for years that the cave in Satserblia in Georgia was an area with lots of human activity used for thousands of years, and yet from these centuries of use, only a single woman's genome has been sequenced. The researchers led by evolutionary biologist Pierre Gelabert and archaeologist Ron Ponhassi of the University of Vienna in Austria went to the Satserblia cave looking for environmental DNA. They took six soil samples, from which they found genetic material in mitochondrial DNA. This created a fragmented picture with pieces of a puzzle that needed to be painstakingly sequenced. A huge task, but one with rewarding results. Only a small portion of the woman's genome was found, but even from this small snapshot, researchers concluded she was a member of a previously unknown group of modern humans. The group is extinct but could be an ancestor to present-day humans in Europe and Asia, a link made through the comparison of the genomes. The wolf also represents a now extinct species, demonstrating the significant evolution and changes to wolves that occurred 11,000 years ago. The bison DNA has been tied to the living bison, though linked much more closely to the European and Eurasian bison over that of the North American bison, suggesting some point before the Satserblia cave bison was when the lineage divided. The discovery that DNA can be preserved in sediment is a revolutionary discovery, with the ability to transform the way we conduct archaeological research forever. A 3,700-year-old Babylonian stone tablet gets translated and changes history. We often hear tales of archaeological breakthroughs and ancient artifacts changing our historical, sociological and cultural understanding of societies, both modern and ancient, but it is much rarer for our understanding of maths to shift so significantly. But an ancient stone tablet donning the name Plimpton 322 or P322 has done just that. P322 was first uncovered in the early 20th century by archaeologist, antiquities dealer and Indiana Jones inspiration Edgar Banks. The tablet was discovered in modern days southern Iraq and is now being held at Columbia University. The tablet displays four columns and 15 rows of numbers inscribed in suniform, a writing system used and developed by the ancient Sumerians of Mesopotamia. 
Interest in the Babylonian tablet picked up in the 1940s, when the Suniform writing was recognized as numbers that reflect the Pythagoras theorem, a mathematical theory that most teenagers are familiar with. Teens all over the world have memorized this theory verbatim. The square of the hypotenuse equals the sum of the square of the two other sides. The discovery and use of this theorem in Babylonian times has sparked a great deal of discussion, lasting for decades. Mathematician Dr. Daniel Mansfield and his research team from the University of New South Wales in Sydney, Australia, were studying P322 after seeing an image of it whilst designing maths courses. Mansfield said, I'm sure it's trig, I'm sure it's trig, but how? The endless rules of trigonometry have haunted many people, high schoolers frantically memorizing for exams and graduates who still get nightmares. But P322 did not display endless rules of sine, cosine and tangent. This trigonometry had a makeover. From the Greek astronomers who were long credited with first uncovering trigonometry to the modern day usages, we have always used the rules of sine, cosine and tangent, figuring out angles and approximate measurements, rounding up to make these complex numbers functional. But the Babylonian tablet could be telling us that not only was there another way all along, but that they found this way first, beating the Greek researchers to the punch by 1500 years. In this Babylonian approach, complicated angles have been replaced by ratios. Mansfield described P322 as a clean and easy way to use trigonometric table. The team unraveled the tablet's meaning and concluded that the lengths of the sides were calculated in ratios, not angles. Mansfield discusses the revolutionary aspects to this tablet, explaining that whilst we may prefer to stick with angles and not shift the status quo, the outside perspective is amazing, reflective of an ancient society and a simpler approach to mathematics. Dr. Mansfield stated, we have to really get outside our own culture. Mathieu Ossendriever, a historian on ancient science from Humboldt University in Berlin, reiterates the value of this discovery, pointing out that the angles we use are only approximate, giving us rough figures we have deemed close enough. By comparison, the use of ratios is far more accurate, leaving the maths as unaltered and exact. Despite all the excitement that came with this discovery, there is still a good deal of speculation surrounding the use of this table. Ossendriever explains that there is no proof that the table was utilized in the ways we use trigonometry today, despite what the research papers are claiming. Another much harsher criticism comes from science historian Joran Freiberg, who retired from the Chalmers University of Technology in Sweden. He emailed Science magazine stating the Babylonians knew nothing about ratios of sides. He instead believes links to trigonometry are purely coincidental. Despite other researchers' uncertainty, Mansfield and his team maintain their belief that P322 is an early trigonometry table and was used for architectural purposes, constructing palaces, temples and canals. Whilst there is a good deal of speculation, the debates surrounding this 3,600-year-old tablet are becoming more exciting and more relevant. Could we incorporate ancient approaches into modern-day teachings of trigonometry? Only time will tell how practical the use of ratios is in trig, but we do know that the dreaded maths of right-angled triangles has been around for much longer than we thought. Largest Meg Ripples on Earth from Dinosaur Asteroid Found Under Louisiana Louisiana is known as a land of urban myths and mysterious happenings, but underneath Louisiana lies the largest ever mega ripples ever found on Earth. These mega ripples are 16 meters in length, which is equivalent to a five story building. They stretch 5,000 feet in width. The mega ripples lie right underneath the Lat Lake and its near vicinity. Their geology implies that they formed directly after the extinction of the dinosaurs when the meteor that took them out hit the surface of our green planet. Data analysis revealed that these mega ripples date back to the Cretaceous period of the Earth over 65 million years ago. Back then the entire area had still been underwater. As for how the ripples formed, when the Chicxulub asteroid that destroyed the dinosaurs crashed into the Yucatan Peninsula, it caused a huge tsunami that formed the mega ripples on the sea floor. Gary Kinsland, 
a professor at the University of Louisiana stated, the occurrence of ripples of that size means something very big had to disturb the water column. This is just further evidence that the Chicxulub impact ended the Cretaceous period. Devon Energy, an energy corporation, took 3D seismic surveys of the lake's area and found the mega ripples on the lake floor. The surveys were done using surface detectors that capture sound waves that are reflected by the underground rocks and their layers. It is these sound waves that allow scientists to map out the specific geology of the bottom of the lake. Kinsland knew after seeing the ripples in the data that they had to have been caused by the Chicxulub meteor. I immediately saw the ripples and I immediately knew the direction the water would have had to have been travelling in to create them. And I knew that if you go backwards from that, you run right in Chicxulub. As a result, he could use the data to figure out the exact direction that the Chicxulub tsunami went and determined it was facing south-southeast, pointing back to the Chicxulub crater, solidifying his belief that the meteorite and mega ripples are connected occurrences. The wavelength of the ripples was estimated to have been about 1,968 feet. Alongside their width and amplitude, this makes them the largest mega ripples on Earth found thus far, dating back 65 or 66 million years. These mega ripples were trapped, so to speak, underwater after the tsunami washed across the entire Gulf of Mexico and Louisiana and were so deeply hidden under the waves that when violent storms overwhelmed the Gulf of Mexico, the ripples were safe and undisturbed for millions of years. As time passed, the ripples were covered by shale, a sedimentary type of rock that protected the mega ripples from being disturbed until we found them. Shale is composed of primarily mud and clay with fragments of various minerals. The shale formed throughout a period of 5 million years after the catastrophe, or about 56 million years ago. The shale itself was then covered by other kinds of sediments that built up through the epochs. But what do you make of these interesting discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.